From the time ships began to trade on the seas, their voyages have always been attended by accidents. To save lives of seafarers, their ships had always carried lifeboats. But now, with a wide spectrum of commodities being transported across the oceans, the accidents that occur have become more fierce. The lifeboats of today need to be constructed to higher standards to be able to withstand the rigors of terrible fires and toxic gases and quick sinkings. International regulations govern the design, manufacture, operation and maintenance of survival craft meant for use by seafarers. While earlier open boats were the order of the day, today oil, gas and chemical tankers will necessarily have to be equipped with totally enclosed lifeboats. Even many cargo ships are being now fitted with these boats. If a ship carries a cargo of toxic gases, her totally enclosed lifeboat should have a self-contained air support system. If the ship is carrying a flammable cargo, such a lifeboat must be additionally fire protected by means of an external water spray system. To meet international and national requirements, and to obtain certification from classification societies, all prototype lifeboats will have to be subjected to exhaustive tests in the presence of representatives of the regulatory officials. The prototype boat has to pass 17 tests and more than that number of sub-tests. Some salient features. New seating arrangements generally allow more space for a person wearing a life jacket. The new type of four-point seat harness, back support and head restraint provide more comfort and security to each crew member. To prevent injury to survivors who may be in water, a guard is fitted around the propeller. To admit air from outside into the boat, trunking is located at the forward end. A sliding door and a safety valve prevent water from entering the boat in the capsized condition and regulates the pressure inside the boat to within plus or minus 20 millibars of atmospheric pressure. To help survivors in water to board, portable ladder is provided. This can be suspended from the forward end or from either side. To collect rainwater in order to supplement rations, a ridge covers more than 50% area of the canopy. The water collected is led inside into the helmsman's dome, terminating in a tap. To facilitate safe launching at the regulatory adverse list, the boat is provided with a pair of heavy skates made of foam blocks. The skates can be released from within the boat. To facilitate towing and being towed, bollards are fitted fore and aft. To facilitate easy steering, a wheel is incorporated in addition to emergency hand steering. Alternately, hand hydraulic steering system or a nozzle rudder can be fitted. Load test. The load test is to ensure that the boat has sufficient strength to take the load of its complement and equipment. This is a static test. The boat is suspended from its lifting hooks and fully loaded with a total mass equal to the number of persons for which it has to be approved at 75 kilograms per person and gradually loaded with weights evenly distributed representing incremental overloads of 25%, 50%, 75% and 100%. Measurements at these overloads are recorded for deflection of keel at midship change in length, 
change in breadth above the gunwale and at quarter length from forward and aft and midship, and change in depth measured from gunwale to keel. The weights are then removed and the principal dimensions of the boat checked, and no significant residual deflection or change in dimension are found. Self-writing test. In the unlikely event of the boat capsizing due to external forces, it has to be self-writing and will do so automatically provided all the occupants are wearing their seat belts. To be able to do this, the canopy is of double skin filled with polyurethane foam in situ, ensuring strength for the dome to sustain a fully loaded boat in the capsized condition, as well as providing the self-writing properties. The fully loaded boat must be self-writing in both the intact and damaged condition when holed below the waterline and flooded. The damaged boat when capsized or otherwise open to sea should automatically attain a position that will provide an above water escape for the occupants. In practice this means it must achieve a near upright condition. It would be impossible for the crew to release their seat belts and escape the flooded boat in anything other than an upright or a near upright position. The casing for the engine and gearbox should not only be fire retardant but also soundproof so that helmsman's orders can be heard by everyone on board. Drop test. The lifeboat is loaded with weights representing the full complement certified for the boat plus all the equipment including provisions. It is then dropped from a height of 3 meters, measured from the bottom of the keel to the water surface. The boat is examined both internally and externally for any damage that might have been sustained and for any distortions that might have taken place. The engine is started and operated in both ahead and astern modes to verify the normal functioning. The sprinkler as well as the air support systems are tested for satisfactory conditions. Impact test. The purpose of this important test is to ensure that the lifeboat can withstand the impact against the ship's hull while rolling and the g-forces acting on the occupants is within the allowable limits. The boat is suspended from the gantry crane in the loaded condition. Two actual size dummies in fiberglass of 75 kilograms are strapped diagonally and in opposite directions in their seats in way of the impact fenders. The engine, gearbox and sprinkler system are tested. The accelerometer is fitted to the chest and sides of the dummies. The boat is then pulled to the required distance from a solid wall and then released so that at the time of impact, high impact forces are experienced from the velocity of around 3.5 meters per second. The boat strikes against the concrete wall. The hull and the superstructure are examined for damage. The engine, gearbox and sprinkler system are also tested for being in a satisfactory condition. The maximum g-force obtained is around 6. Engine test. The engine of the lifeboat is started and the lifeboat is manoeuvred for a period of at least 4 hours. It should also be demonstrated that the lifeboat can tow a 25-person life raft loaded with its complement at a speed of two knots. The engine has to be placed in a chamber at a temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius. When all its oils are cooled to minus 15 degrees, the engine is started three times. The third time, the engine is allowed to run for 10 minutes and its transmission operated. A water-cooled engine is operated for at least five minutes at idling speed out of the water. The engine should withstand this test without any damage. The engine should also withstand operation for at least five minutes with the central line of the crankshaft submerged in water. Fire test. Perhaps the most severe test for the lifeboat is the fire test. The boat has to be capable of withstanding fire for a minimum of ten minutes with the internal temperature remaining at a tolerable level for the occupants. 
the boat has also to be seaworthy on completion of the test. Before the production of a prototype, a fire test on a scaled-down model is carried out to ascertain various unknown but important factors such as the quantity and quality of the fuel required, effectiveness of the instrumentation, fire retardancy of the resin and water sprinkler design. The valuable information collected from this model fire test proves of immense value in conducting the actual fire test. A static cement concrete tank five times the size of the plan area of the boat and capable of holding the fuel required for the fire is used for this test. The boat, fully outfitted and loaded to substitute the weight of its full complement, is kept in position in this tank on cradles and the tank filled with water up to load water line. Instruments for recording temperatures and pressure inside the boat, engine revolution, analysis of quantity and quality of air inside are also installed. The instrument's console is kept about 30 meters away from the site to monitor readings. Prior to the commencement of the test, surveyors enter the boat to inspect the interior and the various thermocouples, instruments, etc. The engine is tested and also the functioning of the sprinkler and air system. 3,400 litres of kerosene calculated for a 15 minutes fire burn is then poured into the tank and firefighting personnel take up their positions. The engine is started. The external water spray activated. Valve for supply of air from cylinders opened. And the only door which remained open till then closed. The gangway is withdrawn and 40 litres of petrol is sprinkled at various points in the tank for initial ignition. The fuel is ignited at the corners of the tank and the flame within a short period engulfs the boat. The salient features of the fire test are continuous temperature recording at not less than 10 positions inside the lifeboat by means of thermocouples located in various positions. Maximum temperature recording using thermometers in three positions. Continuous measurement of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon contents by infrared analyzer. Periodic measurement of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxygen and styrene content in glass receptacles. Effect on test animals. For this purpose, a couple of mice are placed inside the boat. Fire test timing. The period of the test is 14 minutes from ignition to extinction of the fire, during which the boat should be completely covered by flames for at least 10 minutes. Fire test result. The complete instrumentation and recording of the temperature, pressure and engine revolution is carried out by Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. The air analysis is carried out by a government agency. The proper functioning of thermocouples pressure monometer, engine revolution, air analyzing methods, etc. are inspected before and after the test and readings taken in the presence of surveyors of Lloyd's Register of Shipping and Director General of Shipping. Air supply. The test results showed that during the fire test the air inside the boat was within normal limits and no traces of carbon monoxide were present. Air supply at a constant pressure is maintained through a reduction valve fitted to the supply from the air cylinders. The mice were removed from the boat and seen by the surveyors. They do not show any ill effects. The results of the fire test showed that gas analysis report indicated that no significant amount of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrocarbons or styrene were present in the boat during the fire test. Recording of temperature showed that in spite of external temperature reaching approximately 800 degrees Celsius at 20 centimeters from the hull, the air temperature within the boat increased only by a marginal 9 degrees Celsius. Close balance between supply of air and engine consumption during the 10 minutes of test is demonstrated by the maintenance of a positive pressure of 4.5 millibars above atmospheric pressure within the boat. 
the fire test confirmed that a lifeboat with its crew can endure safe sailing through a fire for a period of 10 minutes. Overload tests. After the fire test, the lifeboat is subjected to a 25% overload test. The boat withstands the test well and no permanent deflection is seen. The other tests, that is, operational test, lights test, strength test, material test, seating test, seating strength test, buoyancy test, stability test, freeboard and stability test, release mechanism test, towing test, speed maneuvering test are also conducted on the lifeboat in the presence of surveyors. With the successful completion of the above test, years of painstaking R&D work on the 8-meter totally enclosed survival craft bears fruit in terms of certification by the Ministry of Transport, Government of India and the Lloyd's Register of Shipping. <laughs>